गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी विथ मी हेयर इज फुलू इमाम सर लेट्स नो समथिंग अबाउट हिज लाइफ ही हैज बीन टू हजारीबाग एंड हैज गिवन हिज होल लाइफ इन हजारीबाग लेट्स नो अबाउट हिज वर्क अबाउट हिज लाइफ एंड एवरीथिंग वट हीज डूइंग इन हजारीबाग एंड मेकिंग हजारीबाग पॉपुलर ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड आई वॉज बॉर्न इन हजारीबाग इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी टू मैं टॉकिंग इंग्लिश आप जैसा बोलिए वट एवर माइट इज वर टॉकिंग इंग्लिश बिकॉज द चिल्ड्रेन ऑफ टूडे सीरियस वर्ल्ड understand the english and english is now the lingua franca of the country exactly. and the world so i was born in 1942 in azarbaijan in the domlen mission hospital i grew up my babyhood was spent in kudarma which is a very familiar place to all azarbaijan people and i grew up uh, as a student of st javier's and mount carmel school 1949 i was joining in mount carmel school with my friend vikram sen and pushpa das and bernard patnai so ben verma very old names of azarbaijan and uh, 1953 uh, i believe was the first student of st javier school it was the february 28 i believe it was when i joined 52 perhaps it was uh, 59 batch so to speak of oxa so i spent my life in azarbaijan and uh, i feel privileged that you have asked me to talk to you I do have a lot to give, and I have given a lot. So, if you want to share with me, I am in an eminent position to do so at 75, because I have been close to Hazaribagh, even though I've travelled many, many times abroad. I still travel. I travel all the time. I've just come back from Sri Lanka, from a new experience. I spent one week with the Jain community uh, uh, intellectuals in Sri Lanka and Colombo. where we were investigating the early jain habitation of sri lanka perhaps even when the land bridge existed because the jain community claims to be a, a very old community even the roots of the vedic civilization are claimed to be jain so i was very very privileged to be in sri lanka because i am very uh, devoted to the jain concept of ahimsa especially not eating meat i'm very devoted to that so i'm very happy to be in sri lanka so i'm always traveling now i'm in hazaribagh and one thing i will say that uh, in sri lanka i found not only among the young people among the older people because i'm mixing people of my age there is a certain spontaneity vivacity and joy de vivre which i'm missing in india frankly india is a very boring place and uh, there was no dirt there was no pollution there was no filth apart from the fact sri lanka has very clear skies due to the island uh, location but apart from that there was no local garbage there were plenty of waterways which you would expect with an island uh, uh, country and uh, the people were spontaneous standard of life was much higher than in india anyway i mean i went across the whole of sri lanka and uh, very outgoing warm people and perhaps this is a comment for hazaribagh because having been brought up in hazaribagh as a native of the town and the place I mean i grew up in my whole life uh, having samosas with rickshawalas and having um, this uh, barras and korra and uh, i mean my school going days i would go on a bicycle and i may have grown up to an elite or privileged background but that was not the point the point is that i was a person of the common man and i grew up a lot hunting in the forest and the jungle and so i developed my love for tribal people which i still have but no one can take from me so how did you first get recognition uh, to the other side of the uh, world i mean from india how the westerner recognized you through your work? the way you recognized me you wouldn't have asked me for this interview if i never had something special Exactly. So it's very. I, we want to know it's, that it's <laughs> very simple. <laughs> I mean, uh, you go into a garden and you pick up a certain rose, because that is the brightest rose or the most flourishing or flowering. So you recognize it. So perhaps that I had that little quality or that charm mm-hmm. that uh, people understood. Ke yahan par to koi ajuba chiz hai, something uh, very special. But that is not the reason why I achieved uh, such notoriety or fame, whichever you would like to call it. Not notoriety. It is fame. uh because uh, i had a very good idea uh, of the western uh, society the things that they like and i knew that uh, if you want to make anything popular then the best road is art uh, there is a, because it is a culture 
And if you want to go into any society that is uh, foreign only, uh, the way to go into it is through art or through any of those crafts that may have a, a, a cultural significance or artistic value out of the commonplace. It must have something very special about it, like Zardari of Lucknow, mm. or it should be like the um, Bengal Kamtha, mm. or so things like that. Immediately, even in Europe or America, uh, people will say, well, this is different to Amish quilting, or this is uh, different to Quaker embroidery, and they will be able to feel that it is one of those touches of excellence, like enamelware from Iran, or it is uh, gold plating from certain parts of the Orient, or you're talking a uh, very quality ceramics from Southeast Asia, or musical instruments uh, from anywhere in the world. I mean, these, these are all museum subjects, you could say. So the subject that I chose was a, a very special and elitist uh, subject, which was the art of the tribal people of Jharkhand. So obviously it was going to get uh, recognition anywhere I took it in the world, if I took it, if somebody else would have taken it, I doubt it would have reached where it reached, because in 1995, when I first began my work, I uh, found uh, interest in the work in Bombay, and Bombay is the correct place, because people like Jiddu Krishnamurti and Avariya uh, Elwin, they found their fort in Bombay. Uh, Bombay was the city of intellectuals, it is the city of wealthy people, it had the background of the Parsi heritage of Iran, which is perhaps the oldest uh, foreign uh, uh, intellectual, um, should we say, spirit of the western coast, which was linked uh, to, 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 to the great uh, iconic uh, industrial houses of India, like the Tatars or the Badriches. And uh, so having contacts with good friends of that kind, and I am talking of people of that kind, the Gandhis of um, uh, Bombay, uh, Sherin and Kepu Gandhi and uh, Khorshed, they recognized my work and uh, Adi Godridge's wife, Firoza, she recognized the work. And uh, we immediately felt that uh, Kasmin Mehta in the early days also was very helpful. And we felt that there was something here which was very uh, renaissance type of subject. And in 1995, um, uh, Khoshek Gandhi offered me an exhibition at Kemur Gallery and her husband, as you know, was the founder of modern art in India, Keku Gandhi, and he was the, um, I mean, the premier art connoisseur of India ever, I mean, in the 30s. And he started the framing company Kemur so that they could uh, bring excellence to excellence by framing. So Tayyip Mehta and uh, M.F. Hussain and all were friends and their houses were filled with the paintings of these artists and their children grew up with these artists. So I was in a very nice atmosphere in the mid-1990s when I was with the, um, the families that uh, were the, the founder families of Indian art, modern art. And uh, Mrs. Pugu Jayaka had been a mentor to me in Intac as chairman of Intac. So she designed my project for the Travel Women Artists Cooperative uh, in which we give a third of the funds back to World Health Fund, a third of the funds back to the artists and that's how does the fund for the running of the organization, which is the way I started off. And I was with the Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage, which meant that I had an FCRA audited intake account. I have the status and dignity of a chapter convener. We have 187 chapters now. In those days we had about 60 or 80 chapters, I think. I'm going back to when INTEC started in the mid-1980s, 30 years ago. I've been convener here since then. And um, I suppose they'll replace me when I die. Uh, but uh, my wife Elizabeth is the co-convener, so I hope she will continue. So the Tribal Women Artists Cooperative is over here. And we started uh, by having an exhibition at the Kemal Gallery. Then uh, we followed it with an exhibition at the uh, Feroza Godridge's uh, Sam Rosa Gallery. So I got two of the best galleries in India. And after that, note of this art was taken by the greatest curator of the Southern Hemisphere, that was Anthony Burke of Sydney, Governor General Burke's grandson, great-grandson. So Anthony Burke, whom we call Ace, he came one day, and um, Claudia Hiles was a very, very respected um, authority of Aboriginal art in Australia. Claudia also came from Canberra, 
and Ace came from Sydney, and he was the uh, curator of the Hogarth Gallery in Paddington, which is second to none in the Southern Hemisphere as a small gallery, the biggest in Sydney, perhaps of its kind, in Paddington. And uh, Anthony came to me and he said, uh, would you like an exhibition? I said, I would love an exhibition. So he said, who do you want to put? So I said, a one-man show. He started off with a one-man show. So he said, okay, and who would you suggest? So I said, Kutli Ganju, because she's painting here now. I had an Australian project going with the Australian High Commission. She was the star of the project, so I said, Kutli will go. So can she come? I said, certainly she can come. And uh, so we had an exhibition in 1995, uh, 1996, I believe it was, September. Hogarth Gallery Paddington, Putli Ganju, with no lesser person than the great Jhangar Singh Shah. It was a one man, two one man shows at the same time, and uh, there was a very eminent Australian Aboriginal artist, uh, Albert Namajira, a name to reckon with, the greatest of the greats. So there was a retrospective of his exhibition on at the same time, and we exhibited eight of her paintings, and I think eight of Jhangar's including the stag with horns, which now these uh, barbarians at Asian paints or somewhere have gone and put up on the walls of buildings with uh, spray painting. So I okay. think it was the same format. But I will come back to uh, that art uh, talk again. Okay. Now we will take a look uh, at some literary work of yours and we want to know something about on the talk, on the work on the talk, right? Okay. 